Hello everybody, these are evaluating infinite limits. So when uh, the limit of some function as t or whatever variable that you're using approaches infinity, how do we solve that? Because infinity is not a number, it's more like a, a concept. It means like endless in some direction, uh, loosely, basically. So how do we solve this? We first solve this by dividing all the terms in both the numerator and the denominator um, by the variable whose degree is the highest that's found in the denominator. What that means is, um, look at the denominator, take the highest exponent and divide all the terms by t raised to that exponent or again whatever variable that you're using. So this becomes uh, the limit as t approaches infinity uh, and of course it's going to be 3 halves because 3 halves is 1.5 and that's the highest of uh, of all of uh, everything found in the denominator. So you're going to have t over t 3 halves minus uh, now t square root of t let's write it up here uh, square root of t is the same as t over one half because the index of a square root is of course two but we don't write that um, t inside is raised to one so the numerator, numerator and the exponent is one so since we have a variable multiplied to the same variable we add the exponents so it's essentially two over two plus one over two equals three halves and that's adding the exponent so now we're left or let's put the numerator as t over 3 halves divided by t over 3 halves. And then we divide the numerator and do the same thing likewise with the denominator. So you have 2 t 3 halves over t 3 halves plus uh, 3 t over t 3 halves minus 5 over t to 3 halves. Now I trust by now that, that your teacher or your tutor have already drilled you on the limit laws so like the the quotient rule uh, says that you, that you could put the limit of the numerator as t approaches infinity over the limit of the denominator as t approaches infinity and then you probably probably learn the sum and different rules or so so like it like you could like put the limit in front of this minus the limit the same limit in front of that and do all that but here you could just like look at them one at a time and do it in, in your head just remembering that you have a, a limit as t approaches infinity in front of each term uh, here so uh, but again that's why it's good to have uh, practiced that back in the earlier section uh, so let's take each term one by one so let's take this term what happens as the limit of this as t approaches infinity well uh, notice that as t approaches infinity, well, t is going to approach infinity in the numerator. So this is getting larger and larger and larger. But t uh, raised to 3 halves is getting larger faster or larger bigger it, because this is t to the first and this is t raised to 1.5. And 1.5 is greater than 1.0, so it's going to... to get closer to infinity faster than t can. So let's uh, do like a, a simple, uh, simpli uh, for simplicity, uh, like a way to to uh, wrap our heads around that. Uh, let's say that t equals 2. So let's say you have t over t cubed for simplicity. Okay, as this example. Let's say t is 2. So t is 2, uh, 2 thirds is 8, and that could be reduced to 1 fourth. But the point is, is that as t gets bigger, like from 1 to 2, uh, then t cubed gets bigger, from 1 cubed to 2 cubed. And as we probably know back from elementary school math, uh, mathematics, that, that when the denominator, um, the higher and bigger the denominator goes, the smaller and smaller the quotient becomes. So t over 100 is far, far, far much huger than t over a billion, for example. So t over a billion is like 0 0.000, a whole lot of zeros um, before you get to a number. So in other words, it's getting 
very, very, very small. And if you notice, um, as you get 0 0.0001 to 0 0.00001, in other words, it's getting closer and closer to zero. Uh, my professor done this on the board um, as an example, y equals 1 over x. Okay, what does that graph look like? Well, there's a vertical asymptote here and a horizontal asymptote here. This graph looks like this. And as you notice, that the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity, positive infinity right here, um, to positive infinity, the closer and closer the graph or the function is approaching zero. So what about negative affinities? Taking the limit as t goes to negative affinity. Well, likewise, um, t, uh, as t gets closer to negative infinity here, then it's also getting closer to zero. As both sides gets closer to zero, it's going to affinity. But we could use this uh, trick um, as um, to know that when when the denominator um, when the exponent in the denominator is bigger than the exponent of the numerator that means this is getting bigger and bigger faster and the more big the denominator is than the numerator the more uh, the more uh, closer to zero it's going to be so um, what happens with uh, t over t raised to 3 halves. Well, that's going to go to 0. And that, that's just the notation or, or the method that I, that I had. And I hope that you could understand this because the, new, the degree of the denominator is much more bigger than the numerator, meaning that this is getting larger and larger um, as t approaches infinity than here. So it's basically on its way to 0. Uh, this is going to actually cancel out and become a 1. Okay, uh, that's just going to be 1. Don't forget that 1. And uh, this is going to cancel out, and you're left with 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, now this one, the same thing here. What's happening? The As the denominator, as t in the denominator approaches 0, it's getting closer to 0 because the degree of the denominator is much higher or relatively higher than the degree in the numerator, so this is going to zero, canceling out that entire term. And this one automatically goes to zero because five over, as t gets larger in the denominator, um, since the denominator is getting larger, uh, it's going to go to zero. So basically, it's an indirect proportionality there that if the denominator increases, uh, the entire quotient decreases. Not true with the numerator, though, but um, I don't believe. But anyway, now let's evaluate this. Now, since we're going to be evaluating, we don't need to write the limit of t as t approaches infinity. I don't believe we have to write that anymore. So it's just going to be 0 minus 1. That's why I say remember that 1 divided by 2 plus 0 minus 0. And of course, that's going to result in negative 1 over 2. And that is the answer. And I certainly hope that I was able to explain it uh, correctly and efficiently. I really hope that. So thank you, everyone. I'm not going to ask you to like or subscribe. You could if you want to. I'm passionately doing these videos from my heart. I'm not calling any of my videos perfect or ideal, relatively speaking. Besides, this is merely a fraction of a fraction of a quarter percent of all the myriad of videos out there concerning the subject, including videos with more easy to understand animation and explanation. I'm simply one voice out of many. My passion is to help and teach others, and so this is a great way to implement this zeal while gaining positive feedback from the community. And please let me know of any need of improvement. Um, and uh, thank you very much for your time.